Hello everyone, Eileen here. It's the last day today of the Lavinia Stamps four day lockdown extravaganza. I don't know if you've missed any of the uh, projects that the DT team have been creating and Tracy as well, of course, but there's loads of videos on YouTube and on the Lavinia Stamps Facebook pages. There are step-by-step -step demonstrations. Mandy Branson has done a Facebook Live. I think Joe Rice has done a live as well. And uh, all, all sorts going on. So pop over to the Lavinia Stamp website or YouTube or their Facebook pages and play catch up. This is my video. I did one yesterday and I'm doing another one today. Using the new stamps that have been released for the four day uh, extravaganza. And this is, um, this features tree stem, tree dem, den, den, D-E-N, and also bandit, this glorious, glorious fox. Isn't he handsome? I've also used a stencil in the background and some new text, a new text stamp that's out as well. I'll give you the names of all the stamps again as we go through the demonstration. Right, let's get cracking. A piece of multifarious cardstock, A4, folded in half, creased and cut to 14 centimetres in width by 20 centimetres in length. And then using the Sweet Poppy stencil tape, I created a border all the way around this centre aperture and um, make, making sure that the inside piece of tape in particular is firmly stuck to the card so that the ink doesn't leak underneath. I'm going to turn the card on its side because I want to do... Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to do the stenciling first. Okay. The stencil I'm using is, again, from Lavinia Stamps, and it's called Flourish. Very pretty stencil. Use it a lot. It's got some uh, gaps in the... Uh, image in the pattern of the image. I'm putting those gaps over on the right hand side That's where most of my white space will be So popping that onto the card not bothering to tape it down and I'm using speckled egg Distress ink for my first layer of sten stenciling Makeup brush from Sweet Puppy Stencil it's all cleaned. I've cleaned it on some textured kitchen towel. I never wash my brushes. And this pad isn't very wet, so starting at the bottom, circular motion, and I'm just putting the ink straight from the pad because it's, um, it's quite a dry pad. I used it a lot. Lots of pressure on the bottom part, going almost across to the edge. And then up the stencil towards the middle, but keeping away from now from the right hand side. And not so much pressure because I want there to be a sort of a soft fade out look, even less, less pressure going up now. Not right to the top, about an inch or so down. Very gentle, very loose wrist action. And then coming down a bit more pressure. On the head of the brush to increase the ink make it darker and I think that will do me that's the stencil first layer um, I'm not washing the stencil I'm going to use it again in a moment first bit of stamping turn it round I want to see if you can see it okay and I'm using this beautiful stamp called Tree Den and it's unusual it's a gorgeous design and I think that I'm going to be using this a lot the first stamping that I'm going to do with it will be over here uh, towards the um, tape on the left hand side of my card inking up with speckled egg distress 
and I'm going to put the whole image down as close to the tape, uh, the top, the bottom of the taped area and across to the side as I can get down, press, going to stand up so I've got nice pressure. And up, yes. Now I've got a gap between the taped area and the um, tree den image. And I'm going to put another tree den image over the top using a softer colour. And this is shadow grey. When I say it's softer, it is soft, it's archival. It might be a bit darker uh, in this instance than the um, distress ink because I want it to look as if it's sort of in the foreground or coming into the foreground. But the main bulk of the image will be on the taped area. And you'll see in a moment what I mean. So, yeah, archival shadow grey, first generation, because it's quite a pale ink. And then popping that down. Fair bit of pressure because you've got the lip of the tape now between the stamp and the cardstock, so it needs to be fairly heavy handed with that to make sure the stamp is in touch with the card area. Oh, yeah, that's good. There's still a little bit of a gap, but I'll show you how to get rid of that. Right, so that's that side. Now I'm going to put it back up in the vertical position. And I'm going to go in now with the tree stem, which is a similar image, but it's a lot thinner. And it's still very interesting, very intricate. And I'm sure I'm going to use this a lot too. In fact, I have seen some of the DT work where the ladies have used, and gentlemen, because we've got a Tom, who a DT member, and they have used this tree stem and tree den with pale inks and they've got almost a magical ethereal image uh, where the uh, images are going back in the background. Absolutely stunning look. So I'm going to have a go at that. So I'm using the archival ink in shadow grey again and inking up tree stem. Turning it round again because it's a long stamp and this gives me a better look to see that it's straight. And I'm going to, oh now I want to put the paper down. I'm stamping off the card with this. I'm not having it up the side of the card, the whole image. It's about halfway, I think. So it's off. So it's off the card onto a piece of scrap copy paper. Press, that's down. That's not a huge uh, amount of ink on there, so I'm going to do it again. You see, it doesn't matter if you have to go over the top with this because it looks as if you've got a forest of them. <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm just going to pop this down again the lip of the tape has stopped the contact of the stamp to the card, so there's a gap. Oh, that's better, right? So save that. It's one of the stamps that you could stamp over the top and get away with it, which is always a bonus. Now I'm doing uh, archival ink again. Very pretty, this Rose Madder. One of my favorites. see yep now I'm going about halfway up beside the previous image first generation again because this also is a quite a pale ink and then second generation and coming down even more so three different heights here and give it a good press it's given it a shadow so I think that I will ink up again 
I'm not putting quite as much on. And then over the top again, not so much pressure. That's it. So it's it's sort of a bit, um, there's bits of the image missing, which is the look I was after. Yep, yeah, that's good. Right, now there's a little bit of a gap here. And what I'm going to do, and you're going, what are you doing that for? Um, I'm doing this so that the gap is closed. And when I take the tape off, I'll have a straight edge. And I'm just going to fill in a line or two. I've got my T-square here. Keep me straight. So finding the gapped area. And very lightly with a pencil. Very lightly. Just going to pop in a couple of lines. To close that gap up. Sorry Trace, I'm altering your design. And that. I promise you, when you take the tape off, you won't notice that, but you would notice it, the gap, if you hadn't filled it in. And pencil's the best thing to do it with because it's very light, and, and if you cock it up, you can rub it out. Okay, so let's take the tape off, and then hopefully you'll see what I mean. I haven't got any ink on the front, that's good. Got some on the back. Oh well, never mind, you didn't see that. <laughs> so, there we go. So that is where I've drawn the pencil line in, just down that edge. But it just finishes off, for me, it just finishes off the, the image in that area. I didn't want the gap, my eye would have been drawn to it. Your choice if you put it in or not, but uh, I quite like that. Now I am going to disguise the pencil further because I'm putting the Flourish stencil back on and I'm using Archival Rose Madder this time with a, uh, another stencil brush that I've used the pink for. Taking some of this off, holding it down and I'm just going to start about halfway up, circular motions, bringing it down, not right to the end, not right to the bottom, not even right bot to the bottom of the image, just about an inch and a half up from where you started stamping. But going up, very, very loose with the wrist, I just want that fade out, that gentle fade out into the distance with this stencil. So it looks... Ethereal, that's my favourite word at the moment. <laughs> Misty. Magical. <laughs> it's what you get with Lavinia stamps. Right, let me have a look at this. Okay, so I'm bringing this over. I want to bring a little bit of the pink into the middle of the card. Again, be careful. I'm not inking up again. I'm just putting extra pressure on the brush head. And that, a little bit there, and that will do me, I think. Oh, now, it's not faded out as much as I wanted to, so I'm going to give it a bit more. So no, I'm going to give it a bit more still. There's very little ink on the brush, but I'm not inking it up again. It will just overdo it. Yeah, that's better. So I've just got... You don't have to line the stencil back up. Just, I think I've got enough there. I'm not going to risk any more. So the stencil's in the water. And now we come on to the main image, which is... Oh, no, I don't. I'm telling you fibs. I've got to do this first. And this is the new text. New words called... And this is a verse called Snow, snow Falling. And obviously it's about cold wind blowing, the snow, the air is freezing. And it's about the tall trees standing. So ideal. Beautiful, beautiful text and font. Using the archival um, shadow grey. 
first generation starting up at the top not right to the top of the card but starting at the top of the tree stem and just about an inch and a half out from the edge gently down pressing but not too heavily I want a whisper of the font the text I don't really want to see too much that's all right but inking up again pressing uh, in a bit more from the edge of the card so pressing down a little heavier so that you can see more of the text yes and I think that I might try there again yeah that's good just got a whisper of that and then I'm coming into the card even further so it's inked up again in the same grey more towards the middle that's good and then I'm going to go back out again there's the phone oh dear okay right I'm just going to go towards the edge of the card at the moment now off the card like so that's good so you've got different widths of that text coming in and I'm just going to do that top again right so that's uh, the first one didn't come out too well the text so now oh, sorry if you can hear my husband why have men got such loud voices um, right oh there we are I've got some white pen because I've got a blob of blue there and I don't like that so I'm going to get rid of it and you can get rid of this well I am by just stroking the white pen in a vertical position as if it's meant to be an adornment to, <laughs> to the tree den and, oh yeah it's got some white snow on it of course it has <laughs> Okay, so that will do that. Now I'm going to take the beautiful, stunning bandit that I've already loaded up onto my um, stamp press because he's a, a really solid um, silhouette card, silhouette image. I want to make sure that he comes out okay. And he is going to go, move it over so you can see it. He's going to go just out, his tail is just going to go out of the area of the main image towards the spine of the card. And he's going to be just about half an inch up from the bottom also. So let's see how he goes there. I think he will look okay there. Press him down. There might be some ink on him from an earlier bit. No, that's good. All right, let's put that over. Make sure it's butted up well. I'll move this back into your line of sight in a moment. I just want to ink him up. And I want to take my time because he's such a solid image. And he's so beautiful. I want to make sure you get the full effect of him. And this is Versifying Claire Nocturne again. There we go. Yes, I know it's rather a lot, but I want to be sure. And I've got a tiny bit here and here to get rid of that so fingers crossed that it comes out and stand up move it over so you can see it better there we go I'm looking out of my windows aren't the trees beautiful colors 
Okay. Think that that should do it. I can press it again if I need to, but I don't. Oh, he's absolutely stunning. Handsome, handsome, handsome chappy. Right. Okay. So, next, very quickly now, is the moon. I'm going to put the moon on it. And the moon's going down around about there. And I'm using the brush to apply speckled dag around the outside. Now, I'd like your opinion on this because I've found that using the brush to apply the haze around the sun or the moon instead of a smoothie seems to be softer to me. Yeah, and and um, no risk of splodges. Be interested to see if you give it a try what you think. But I like it and I think that I will stick to the makeup brushes for doing the hazy, moony, sunny bit. Because we do that a lot, don't we? Well, I know I do. <laughs> Such a good effect. Okay. Right. I think that that's enough. What do you think? Look at that. See? Nice soft effect. I wasn't very careful either, was I? You know, I mean, I'm on tender hooks with the uh, with the smoothies because I'm thinking I'm overdoing it, you know. And nine times out of ten, I am. <laughs> okay, we're on the final bit now. I'm going to ground the box, band it. I'm going to ground him with some Polychromas pencils, shading. I'm going to stamp up my birds first. And it's the Lavinia Stamps birds, obviously. So useful, this stamp, for filling in, hiding little splodges of ink that you've got on your card and you um, shouldn't have. Gentle tapping. Down we go. I'm going to be careful with this. I just want it to go down and up. Down, up. That's it. No lingering with the birds. And then I've got a piece of or a pen, and this is a stardust. So, very quickly, just going to whip around the edges of my sun moon. Don't want to cover any birds though. And I'm not going to cover any of the tree there that's in the front of my moon I'm not being too careful with this I mean take your time it's just that I'm worried about using too big a file for the uh, filming I think you're seeing it okay yeah right and then finally I've got a white Posca pen and I'm going to pop that there. White Posca pen. Give it a good... Oh, I didn't ground him. Bless him. Right. So I'm just going to put a little bit of grey shadow underneath his paws. And under that paw. Just to give the appearance that he's actually standing on something. Instead of treading water or treading on the stencil. <laughs> and it's like so. And then a very pale grey, just to blend it out a little. Don't want to make a big thing of it, just see that it's there. And then blend it down a bit more so it fades out towards the bottom. That's that. I think that will do. And then there's a little bit of a darker grey there, maybe just blend that in. Like so, yep, and I'm going to blend it with my eraser so that any rough edges of that pencil will um, fade away. I'm looking for my brush to take any bit that I can't find it, so it's low, that will do. 
and then my Posca pen in white. Good shake. And then and give something to bash it with. And that's my perfect layers. Now I want to cover up Bandit because I don't want him covered in white splashes. Quite a bit I'm laying on of this because uh, it's white but I want to be able to see it. There you go. I'm not overly happy with that with that grounding I've done on him. I'm not overly keen on that. I'm going to take some more of it off. And I'm just going to use the paler grey just to give it a hint rather than so much of it. Ah, that'll do. I don't want to put heels or, or use a stencil on it. I just wanted to give it a hint that he's standing on something so it's darker. Right. You get the idea. I'm pretty sure that you can take it from there. Here we go. There's the card that I did originally. Here's the card that I've shown you now. I've got a bit, few more white splashes on that one. I prefer that. Um, other than that, I think that they're okay. They sort of look alike. <laughs> Which is the name of the game. So have fun. Thank you for looking. Thank you for the lovely comments. I hope that you're enjoying our Lavinia Stamps extravaganza weekend. There's more to come. And the dogs have just seen a cat. Bye for now. Have a lovely weekend.